Hello, I'd like to introduce you guys to the new Scotch Bright Clean and Strip XT Pro and XT Pro Extra Cut discs. The purple one here is XT Pro, the green one XT Pro Extra Cut. Main difference between the two of them, the XT Pro has silicon carbide mineral, whereas the XT Pro Extra Cut has aluminum oxide mineral. Big application differences would be the silicon carbide works really well for light rust, paint, mill scale, light to medium mill scale, and applications where you don't want to scratch or damage any of the base metal. The extra cut is a really good disc for removing rust pits, thick paint, thick rust, and scenarios when you need to clean the coating off and then also clean up some of that metal that's underneath the coating. Next, I'm gonna walk you guys through some of the popular applications that these products are used on, and also, again, the differences between the two products. So our green product here is XT Pro Extra Cut. That one has aluminum oxide mineral. Our purple version here, Clean and Strip XT Pro, has silicon carbide. Now with those two mineral differences, there's an ideal disc to choose for every application. That aluminum oxide mineral is going to remove your coating and then also clean and scratch that bare metal afterwards. Whereas the silicon carbide version here, XT Pro, that one's going to clean off the coating and not damage the metal underneath. So if we walked through a few of the applications here, if you have a part with thick paint and you need to clean to bare metal, you're going to want to use the XT Pro Extra Cut, the green version for that. Another auto body shop application, if you need to remove seam sealer on door panels and A pillars, you can use the silicon carbide version so that you don't have to worry about damaging that base metal for when the car is going to be repainted. And for that one here, you're going to be running the disc on its, on its edge to remove that bead of seam sealer there. For this application here, for those of you that are removing a rubber coating that uh, is a byproduct here of creating some oil and gas parts, we would recommend using the silicon carbide version to come in and clean off those, that rubber off those threads without damaging those threads. So here I want to walk through the two different types of rust I have laid out here. This one is what I would consider a light surface rust, and the silicon carbide version, XT Pro, works great for removing surface rust without damaging the metal underneath. If your part has thick rust and some deep rust pits, you're going to want to use the extra cut version in order to remove that rust and then also smooth out those rust pits underneath. The next application I'd like to highlight here is weld burn discoloration. So this heat discoloration, if you want to remove that on a stainless steel part and polish off that weld, we'd recommend using the extra cut version. And this extra cut is going to conform to that weld bead and bring that stainless steel weld to a nice polish. If you have an application where you need to remove light mill scale oils and prep a structural beam for adhesives, let's say for instance you're building a utility trailer, we would recommend using the silicon carbide version, XT Pro. Silicon carbide works a lot better on mill scale than aluminum oxide does. I want to walk through some of the popular converted forms. Over here we have center hole discs. So you would specify them by their outer diameter and their inner diameter. We have right angle discs here in the middle, seven inch and four and a half inch are shown. A couple of the popular attachment types here, TN is a quick change disc. We have type 27 where you'd use the retainer nuts that come with your grinder. And then we have a new version here, type 27 quick change. And type 27 quick change doesn't require any accessories to attach it to your right angle grinder. This next category of converted forms here are called spindle mount 
and Rolock Plus. They're both designed to be ran on their edge primarily versus a right angle disc is ran on its face. The spindle mount would chuck into the collet on your straight shaft die grinder there. And the Rolock Plus version, you would use a Rolock Plus holder and then it becomes a quick change attachment. Last category here is called Rolock. This would just be a traditional TR button type. Primarily would be attached to disc sanders. And then we also have a version here that's called the brake hub cleaning disc. Brake hub cleaning disc is designed to go over the stud on your rotor and clean that base of that rotor off. I'd like to run through the three attachment types for right angle grinders. The first one here for TN quick change discs requires a hub and face plate. Now these discs will work with any customer's backup pad. The hub and face plate I'm going to show you guys today here is our low profile hub and then our black hard face plate. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to rotate these threads until this spindle lock button engages. And now that I have my spindle lock button in place, I'm going to thread on that hub. Now I'll tighten it most of the way by hand there, but I found it's easier to snap in the face plate and that way you can have a little bit more leverage to tighten it down further. Now that we have our backup pad on, to attach the discs, they just thread right on to that 5 8 11 thread on your grinder. You go till it's pretty snug, then you can release your spindle lock. To remove the disc, again engage your spindle lock, and then the disc will spin right off. In order to take this hub and face plate off, again, we're using our spindle lock and we're keeping that face plate on to get that added leverage. The next attachment type that we're going to walk through here is our Type 27 disc. This one requires the use of the two retainer nuts that came with the grinder. So what we're going to do is these retainer nuts, they do have an up and down, so we want to always make sure this little lipped side that has a flange on it is pointing upwards. So we'll engage our spindle lock here on our tool. If your tool didn't have a spindle lock, you can usually grab a section of that shaft with a wrench in order to hold it in place. In order to tighten down our first retainer nut here, we're going to use the spanner wrench that came with the grinder. Then we're going to set our disc on and make sure it it centers itself on that little raised 7 8 inch lip. Lastly, we're going to put on that second retainer nut, again with the flange lipped portion facing upwards. I found it's easy to tighten it some of the way by hand, and then to make sure it's firmly and securely on, we'll use that spanner wrench to tighten it the rest of the way. In order to remove the disc, Again, I'm waiting until that spindle lock engages, and it's easiest to use the spanner wrench to break that retainer nut loose. The last attachment type that I want to walk through here is our brand new threaded quick change disc. It's referred to as Type 27 quick change. And for this disc, you don't need any retainer nuts. It can be attached to the grinder with no accessories needed. So again, engage your spindle lock or hold your shaft threads there with a wrench and then you're going to grab the disc from the outer edge here and tighten it down firmly. To remove the disc, same thing, I'm grabbing that spindle lock and I'm unthreading the disc. Here we have our Rolock Plus and spindle mounted products. These would typically be mounted to a straight shaft die grinder. First type I'd like to show you guys how to attach is our spindle mounted version. This has a quarter inch shank on it and it needs to be attached into this collet that's on the end of your die grinder. So we're going to insert that and now we need to tighten our collet down. What's happening inside of this is there's this slotted collet here and when I spin these two collars onto each other it's actually clamping down 
on that shank. We'll tighten it most of the way by hand here and then to get it really tight we're going to use the two wrenches that came with the die grinder and I'm spinning that top collar clockwise in order to tighten down that collet. So now we have our product on. If we need to remove it, you're going to need to use the wrenches again. And now I'm going to be spinning that top one counterclockwise. And this um, spindle will slide out. The next product here, Rolock Plus, has a stem on top of our Rolock button. And what that stem is doing is giving you added support when running the discs on edge. In order to use the Rolock Plus version, we need to attach a Rolock Plus holder to our die grinder. We're going to do that the same way that we did the spindle mounted products, inserting that smooth quarter inch section there into our collet. And what I'm doing here is I'm tightening down by hand. And then we're going to finish by tightening further with the wrenches. Again, I'm spinning that top one, that bottom one, the opposite direction there. In order to attach my Rolock Plus disc, I need to prevent this from spinning. So I'm going to hold that here. And then I'm going to spin the product on until I've fully seated at the base there of that Rolock Plus holder. To remove, again, if I wasn't holding the spindle from moving, it would never come off. So we need to hold here and then remove the product. Here we're going to go through some of our center hold disc attachment options. You can either put center hold discs on hand tools or they could also go on fixed bench motors and pedestal grinders. I want to walk you guys through a couple of the center hole options here. So this first product, a four inch by quarter inch center hole disc, can be used with this mandrel. What we're going to do is make sure we have one washer on first, and then we're going to press this mandrel through that quarter inch hole in the disc. We'll put our second washer on. And one thing to note here is that this is actually a left-handed thread. So you kind of go clockwise to tighten here instead of clockwise to tighten, or counterclockwise to tighten, rather. And before we can cinch this down, we'll do that at the end, let's get this tightened into the collet on our straight shaft die grinder. So I'm going to insert that in and then tighten most of the way by hand here. We'll snug it up with the two wrenches that came with the die grinder. And lastly, if you remember, we didn't tighten down that nut yet, so we're going to use a 7 16 inch wrench. We're going to go counterclockwise, and what I'm doing is I'm holding that spindle from moving. In order to get it nice and tight, you may need to use one of the wrenches that came with the die grinder and then a 7 16 inch wrench. And again, we're tightening counterclockwise. And those two washers are clamping down on that disc. To remove, you do need to remove the mandrel every time you want to change out the disc. And so we're going to loosen those two collars to pull the mandrel out. Same kind of idea here for our 6 inch disc. This would be a six inch by half inch center hole disc. We're going to use a mandrel again. And we're going to remove the nut and one of the two washers. Slide our disc on to the mandrel. Put on our second washer. Then tighten our nut down by hand here. So this is a right handed thread so we're going to go clockwise to tighten. We're going to kind of snug this up by hand and then we're going to wait until we get this into the tool to tighten it the rest of the way. So now if the mandrel doesn't go into the collet here, it's probably because this collet is already too tight or it's tightened down. So we're going to loosen that up a little bit and slide on 
the mandrel onto the collet. Now what I'm doing is I'm tightening the two collars onto each other to cinch down on that collet. And then to finish it off, we're going to use the two wrenches that were included with the tool here to tighten down on that collet. And lastly here, we need to tighten down that nut that was on the top of the mandrel. So we're gonna tighten that clockwise there.